Hi guys, Harbs and Arbs here. A very happy new year to you all. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this guy, Volo Tham Gedam, better known simply as Volo. We'll be looking at his relationship with the Forgotten Realms and why he is still around in Baldur's Gate 3. Okay, let's go. Now, Volo is not a recent character created by Larian. He has been around for a long while, and I first came across him in the first Baldur's Gate game, but I'll talk about that later. According to Ed Greenwood himself, Jeff Grubb actually created the character of Volo, and he has usually been used by Ed Greenwood as a guide to the realms. A guide he may be, but in Dungeons & Dragons meta talk, which class is Volo? It has been debated about for a while. Is he a low-level wizard? Some sources seem to think so. Is he a rogue? Well, he is described as such in a guide to water deep. Or is he a bard? He certainly acts like one. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what class he is, as beyond D&D, the Forgotten Realms is rich in lore and story, not just a vessel for Dungeons and Dragons. Christopher Perkins answered this question well on Twitter in 2017. Volo's in a class all his own. He's not a traditional adventurer, though he can stick you with a dagger and cast a spell or two. Volo is not to be confused with Marcus Volo of the Wands family in Waterdeep, who once stole a powerful artifact from a mage and placed the blame on Volo Thamgadam. So I personally first came across Volo in Nashkel in the first Baldur's Gate game, and a few months ago when I was revisiting the original games, I used the console to go into his inventory where I found one of these, an aquamarine gem. Now being the type of weirdo that would analyse this, I looked up where aquamarine gems came from and it transpires that they are from the north of Faerun. Volo's Guide to the North was set just before the original Baldur's Gate game in Realm Years, even though in reality it came out five years before the game. I then tweeted this to Ed Greenwood and he seemed to approve of the discovery 22 years after the release of the game, as he gave it a like. Having Volo in Baldur's Gate 3 is important. In a way, him and Elminster represent the Forgotten Realms. They personify it and Volo is the storyteller, at times a storyteller that exaggerates to the point of outright lying. As the fictional mouthpiece of Ed Greenwood, he does well to represent the common man, who at times is not brave or noble, but is insatiably curious about what is out there, there being life generally. Now, Volo's guides are regularly annotated and checked over by Elminster, who is rather disparaging of his ability to write accurately. For example, in a guide to Waterdeep, Elminster writes the following at the start of the book. Nay the less, he missed a lot of water deep, that even an occasional visitor such as myself can spot. Much, no doubt, passed unseen beneath his very nose. He's got some things quite wrong too, but you'll discover what when you meet them. Even if that's just a mite late. And in Volo's Guide to All Things Magical, Elminster says this. What a pretentious title. Not even I would dare to pen something that purported to be a guide to all things magical. Volo did not even try. What he foisted upon Faerunians hungry for enough secrets of magic to make them rulers of the realms was a grab bag full of odds and ends about the art. Notes about this and that, gossip and distorted fragments of spells and processes copied from spellbooks on the sly or misremembered from brief glimpses snatched in places and on occasions when he dared not write anything down. I mean, we all know that Ed Greenwood actually wrote the book, so is he saying that everything within should be taken with a fictional pinch of salt, or that Volo is just a canonical bullshit merchant? Nevertheless, the guides do exist in the realms canonically. In the adventure Waterdeep Dragon Heist, we can see the following that is written. The Yawning Portal serves as the default starting point for this story. One of the first people the adventurers meet there is Volothamp Gadam. He has just returned from a tour promoting his latest book, Volo's Guide to Monsters, and he has a quest for the characters. This refers to this real 5th edition supplement, and the quest mentioned refers to Volo wanting the adventurers to rescue his friend Floon. Canonically, Volo has travelled far and wide, as detailed in the 1995 novel by Brian Thompson. In fact, he has almost been everywhere of note, including and obviously most places in Faerun, Chult, Mazdika and Karatur. Although the book does have some interesting reviews, and I'll give you some quotes from a couple of them. Learn from my example, do not read it, not even just to make fun of it. Spend the fleeting minutes of your finite life here on earth doing things that bring joy to your existence rather than deliberately inflicting pointless suffering on yourself. This is the worst slop I've ever had the unfortunity to read. 
I quite literally could have easily written better garbage than this. I can't believe TSR actually published this. The only reason I could read it is the fact that it is a good idea for a book. Okay, so it wasn't Volo's finest moment, but the point stands that Volo is very well travelled and given that the book is set in 1367 and the first Baldur's Gate game is set in 1368, we come across him in the Belching Dragon in Nashkel about one year after he returns from these travels. He does tell us during this brief encounter that he has travelled the breadth of Faerun, but more than anything this encounter is used to summarise and frame the plot. He also acts as a break in the fourth wall when he says the following two things. Awfully familiar with that pointer, aren't you? And after only one drink, too. I have a story for every man, woman and child in Faerun. However, copyright laws forbid me the telling. This just further reinforces the idea that Volo is our guide to the realms and our way into them, just as he is in these guidebooks. Volo also appears near the beginning of Throne of Baal, where he describes himself as a historian and someone who is quite literally chronicling the events of your life. So if anyone thinks that Larian have forced Volo into Baldur's Gate 3 as some kind of fan service nod to the original games, well yes, you're right, but this is actually an important addition, as it is a significant link to the original 2 and Volo is, and likely always will be, an important part of storytelling in the Forgotten Realms. So, Volo is actually a human, so why is he alive in Baldur's Gate 3? There are well over 100 years from the end of Baldur's Gate 2 and the start of Baldur's Gate 3. The reason for this can be found in Waterdeep Dragon Heist when the following is written. In the year of Blue Fire, 1385 DR, the Spell Plague gripped the world. None knew it at the time, but it has since been divined that Siric's long hatred for Mistra boiled over and led to his murder of the Goddess of Magic. I was absent from the world at this time, indisposed by the force of an imprisonment spell. Elminster has since explained the events to me, but I must confess that much of what he said made little sense. Imprisonment is a very powerful spell that traps the victim and also means that they don't age at all. Well, since Volo escaped from his imprisonment, what has he been up to? Well, we can see in Dragon Plus Magazine issue 6 that he went to Barovia and even met Strahd von Zarevich after being commissioned to explore the area by Rangelis Quelver. In the adventure Tomb of Annihilation, we can see that Volo is in Port Nyanzaru, which is here. Volo was promoting his new book, Volo's Guide to Monsters, which I spoke of earlier, and he then went on to commission adventurers to rescue his friend. We first come across Volo in the Emerald Grove in Baldur's Gate 3 and he is particularly interested in the goblins, their relationship with the Absolute and the fact that they have abandoned Maglubiet. Later, Volo is captured by goblins and we can free him whereby he can perform very bad eye surgery on you, to the point where you lose your eye and he gives you an ersatz eye instead, which functions as a normal eye. Now it is my belief that Volo's role in Baldur's Gate 3 will be a minor one, but he will likely make several appearances in the game at key moments. He is, if nothing else, some light comic relief, but can be used by Larian as someone to explain things to the characters. He is, after all, incredibly knowledgeable, even if some of that knowledge may be out of date. However, as I said earlier, in Throne of Baal he was literally chronicling the stories of the protagonists in that game. He is a link to the ball spawn, Abdul Adrian, and as much as I dislike that canon character, Volo could certainly be the one to drop some nice easter eggs along the way. Okay, thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video then do please give me a like and subscribe, and if you like, you can check out the Patreon and Discord links below. See you next time, bye!